The analog delay effect plugin within Studio One emulates a one head tape delay and can help give you extra depth to your recordings or extreme effects. Now, if you're someone who's familiar, not familiar, or is wondering how musicians and engineers, artists could create a delay effect using a tape machine, I definitely recommend checking out this link up above here. This is another YouTuber who actually connects a reel to reel tape machine to his hardware mixer to the send out and then connects his electric guitar and sends that guitar signal to the reel to reel and creates the delay effect. It's a really cool video to watch and I think it will give you a better understanding of where this plugin emulation comes from and what you can achieve with it. If you're someone who has worked with the uh, tape machines before in the past, you know, you've been in the game for a while, it may be just, just be cool for you to check out the video and have a nostalgic moment. But anyway, in this song, I've got three tracks. I've got a snare, a guitar, and a vocal here. I've got the analog delay loaded up on each. The analog delay is set to the default. I'm gonna press F12 to bring up the delay for our first track, the snare. And one thing to keep in mind is that when these load, they're gonna load to the default setting. But the parameters are actually set to add a bit of this modulation in the LFO, and I don't particularly want that to start off with, so I'm gonna hold Control and click to take that amount down. Also be aware that in the color section, we are cutting at 100 hertz and 5K. We've got a bit of drive. I'm actually gonna Control click to take that down as well, because I'd like to start completely from scratch. Let's take the ping pong mode off and the width, we'll take that down. So if you're just gonna get started working with the delay and you wanna experiment and start from scratch, be aware that some of these are not to their inactive settings. And as always, we're gonna start from the top and make our way across and down. So we'll start with the delay section here and the time parameter. So by default, this is gonna be set to sync, but I'm gonna disengage that and change this. And when we have the sync turned off, then we're gonna work in milliseconds and seconds. And this is going to set an absolute value that has no relation to the tempo of your song. So we can adjust this down to one millisecond all the way up to three seconds. We can also just click in the field and enter in a value. So I'm going to put in 100 milliseconds. And actually, I'm going to bypass the analog delay just for a moment here. And let's listen back to our snare by itself. Okay, just a basic snare. And I'm also gonna take the feedback down to zero. And with this setting of 100 milliseconds, I'm gonna take the bypass off and let's just play this back. So you can see with this short time, we can create a flam effect to our drum. Increasing it a little bit. Okay, so you get the idea here. Just keeping in mind that a shorter time on something like a one shot, a snare, you can get that flam effect at these lower settings. Let's then switch to the guitar. I'll click on that. So now we're using the delay for it. I'm gonna take some of these settings back to their uh, inactive state as well. Let's change the sync to be our time. I'm gonna click and put in 140 milliseconds here just to show that we can get kind of a slap back effect with a lower setting in the time parameter here on our guitar. Let's bypass again our delay and listen to the dry guitar. And let's take the bypass off. Take that down to 120. Okay, so you can hear how that works. Let's now come back to our snare and take a look at the sync. So once we activate sync, notice the time changes from milliseconds to seconds to where we can click at the bottom here. We can also use the knob, but we can click at the bottom and choose quarter note, eighth, whatever we'd like. I am going to change this to quarter note. And I just wanna 
show this so that if you are new to delay, this can help you get your bearings on how these time settings are going to work, uh, particularly with the tempo that you've got set in your doll. So now that we've got the sync active and this set to quarter note, our tempo in the song is 120. So if I were to activate the click track and I'll bypass the delay again. So our snare really, when we have it set to quarter, should, the delay should fall on that click track. So let's take the bypass off. So if we change to eighth, then we should get one and two and three and four and. Okay, so if you're just getting started with delays, it can be a little bit confusing working with the times here and getting the material you're adding the delay to to fit with the rhythmic material or the drums that you have in your song. So I just wanted to take a bit of time to set a foundation for this time section here. And as you saw, as I increased the feedback, then we're just getting more of that delayed signal in our audio. And the boost button is actually going to boost the level of that signal that's being fed back into the analog delay. So if I go ahead and play this back again, take the boost off. Let's increase the feedback a little bit. Let's take the click track off. Now I'll boost. So you can hear that that's not only playing the delay is not uh, extending out for further all the way to the end of our second bar, but it's also a bit higher in its level as well. Let's take that feedback down. Let's move on to the right here to take a look at the LFO section. And the LFO is going to modulate the pitch of your delayed signal. Now with the sync turned off, this is going to be set in Hertz. So we could go all the way down to 0.01 .01 and up to 15 Hertz. And as we saw with the delay time, we can sync this to the doll by clicking on the sync button. And then here again, we can use the knob to adjust to different resolutions. We can also click down below and I'm going to set this to quarter note. And I actually want to move to the guitar for this example. So let's put the sync on, change this to quarter. And we have four different waveform types that we can use to modulate the pitch of the delayed signal. I'm going to leave this on the default triangle, but we also have sine, sawtooth, and square. We also have the amount here, so when this is set to the center, then we're going to have no modulation to our signal. When we move to the right, then we increase that signal. Uh, all the way up at the top, we have 50. Now, moving to the left, we also increase the signal, but it's going to be a different polarity, so we're kind of flipping the waveform around. So uh, just know that that's what these adjustments are for. So let's control click and take that to no effect and listen back to our guitar track. I'm gonna extend the loop out a bit. Okay, so we've set the speed to be quarter in sync with our DAW and we've got this on triangle. Let's then increase the amount pretty high. And I'm going to expand out the automation below here. And what I did was I added triangle, a triangle automation waveform to help give you a better understanding of how this LFO feature works. So this is triangle and it was added with the snap turned on at quarter notes. So you'll notice that the modulation of the delayed signal fits in with this waveform and the quarter note setting. So when we play this back, if we take the amount up, it's gonna be more extreme. Okay, so uh, this section can be a little bit confusing in what it does, so I wanted to make this a bit more visual to un so you can understand. Now, if we would have selected the sign and I were to use the uh, paint tool here and set that to 
sign and drew that in with the snap turned on and set to quarter note, then uh, we would also see visually how the sound is being altered by that different waveform. Now what the amount is actually doing to give you a visual representation, if I take the transform tool and uh, come to the bottom here and let's select everything here and let's take the depth of this down, this is a visual representation of what we're doing when we take the amount down. So if I take this down, the modulation is going to be less extreme. Okay, so the fluctuation in pitch is going to be decreased when we take this uh, parameter down to the center position. And let's go ahead and close this up. And of course, choosing a different uh, waveform type is going to give you a different effect. Sawtooth. Take the feedback up. Okay, so the, you can experiment with this if you'd like to do some sound design for electronic music, experimental music. You don't have to just use this on a guitar or a vocal. Uh, use it as a crazy effect tool. If you go through some of these presets and listen to some of the stuff that they've had created on your material, you can get a better idea of some of the extreme effects that you can accomplish with this. Okay, moving on, let's switch to the female vox down at the bottom. Let's move our loop range in a bit, and let's listen to this unprocessed first. Okay, and so we'll take a look at the color section. Let's take the bypass off. Okay, so this is going to cut low frequencies out. It gives you a reading here of where you're cutting. We're cutting everything below 655 hertz. We can cut the highs. Pick the highs back in. You can hear how that becomes brighter. Bring our lows back in. We then at the bottom have drive. And the drive makes use of a feature called state space from Personas. And this is a modeling technology, technology which uses fancy math to dynamically model analog semiconductor-based circuits. And this is supposed to give you a more analog quality, uh, at least for this particular parameter. And it should add a bit of saturation to your audio signal coming through the delay. Let's come back to the guitar for this. And let's take our LFO off. Okay, and take the drive up. And one thing to keep in mind with the drive is you're going to hear more of it the more of the high frequency content you have. So if we take a lot of the high frequency out, its effect is less pronounced. Okay, so just something to be aware of when you're experimenting. If you're not hearing the effect or you want less of it, you can either take some of the high frequencies out or just take the drive down to achieve the effect that you want. Now, next to the color section, we have motor. And the motor section allows you to emulate the behavior of certain me mechanical parts of an old tape machine, particularly the uh, capstan and playheads. So the factor is for tape speed, and this will alter the speed of your delayed signal. Let's take a look at that or listen to it on our snare. So let's come back to the beginning and we're in the default position of one. So we should just get a feedback time of what we have set here. 
I'm going to change this back to the quarter note and let's give a listen. Okay, so moving the factor to the left is going to slow that down. We're essentially cutting the speed in half. All the way at the left here. When we go all the way to the right, we're essentially doubling. So you can go ahead and play around with this to get some different syncopated effects. Okay, now the inertia is supposed to accelerate or decelerate your delayed signal over a period of time. But as much as I've experimented with it, I haven't been able to hear any, hear any discernible change to the effect. So we are going to skip over that. If you're someone who has been able to get some results with it, please uh, let us know in the comment section what we need to do to hear this. And then next we have width, and this allows you to adjust the stereo spread of your delayed signal. And this section will only be active when you are using it on a stereo channel. So keep that in mind. If you're trying to make adjustments and you can't, then that's because you are using the analog delay on a mono channel. So let's go ahead and switch our ping pong mode on to sum. And sum will sum the left and right channels of your track. And you can then use the width control up top here to control the ping pong effect. So when this is set all the way to zero on our snare, we can hear that that delay is centered. Now we can hear that spread in the stereo field. Let's take our factor of uh, setting back to one by control clicking. Now the swap, notice that the first delay happens in the left channel. Now when we swap, it starts in the right. So the swap is going to let you change the channel that that first delay is going to be sent out on uh, when you activate that. So with it off, it's going to, the first delay will happen on the left channel. When it's on, it, the first delay is going to start on the right channel. Now the next setting that we have is two channel. And the two channel sends the stereo mix of your channel into the delay and you can widen the delay or make it a bit mono. So let's start with the width all the way down in our two channel mode and play this back. Now with the width up, let's actually listen to this on our guitar. So we'll take the width down to zero, switch to two channel. Now let's take the width all the way up. So we can hear how when we have this set more to the right, then it's going to be spread more. The stereo output of the channel is going to be spread more in the field. Uh, and when we have it to the left, then you're going to get more of a mono delayed effect. Now, the final section that we have is our global dry wet blend. So if you're going to be using this as an insert, which I am, then you can use this con to control the amount of the dry signal that you hear uh, in relation to the process signal. If you're going to use this as a send effect, then you'll probably want to set this all the way up to 100 and you may want to go ahead and lock that. And then you would use the send amount to adjust how much of this delay that you would like in your signal. Now we've experimented with the delay on the single snare, our guitar, and this female vocal bit, but you can experiment with this on anything, whether it's a synth, a vocal, a guitar, or an entire drum track. And I actually recently did a video on using effects, different effects in Studio One for your drums. So I'm gonna wrap up here, but I will kind of splice in the portion of that video where I showed using the analog delay on some drums that I had programmed, and you can get an idea of how this 
uh, device, this plugin is going to affect your drum sounds and how you can go about experimenting with the presets and the different parameters in here. So we'll wrap up here and I'll go ahead and cut to that other video to wrap up. Thanks for watching. We'll start with the analog delay. Let's come up to the top and choose one of these here. Playback. We can adjust our dry wet blend here. Unlock it. Our feedback. And again, use our fader here. Take the feedback down. <laughs> 